Next two victims on the bench. What's going on everyone? Back with Flip That Truck. Last week you saw me finish up the SCX-10-1 trucks that combined into one truck. That made it onto the website and sold really quickly. This week we're gonna start working on two more. This is the Flex Seal VS410, which has a lot of history behind it. And this is the class two LC70 based truck that uh, I've had. Now, today we're going to wrap up the Flex Seal, the last few things that are needed on it. And then we're gonna start on the LC70. This thing needs a little bit more work, but we'll get to that here shortly. Now, I haven't really touched this truck much since that live stream where I really got into this. And if you haven't seen that live stream, it's worth a watch. It was quite the disaster. Um, now, there's some things about this truck that are far from perfect still. Um, and I just remember that there were some things left that I maybe still needed to do. But again, I haven't really looked at this truck in a lot of months. So uh, the body for one, you can see those swirls. That is not a camera effect. That is just the paint. You know, the paint's a little thin in the bed. Um, it's the bot. The body's clean as far as scratches and things like that. I don't think it's ever been run, but paint isn't perfect, which, you know, who am I to judge now underneath, uh, I've cleaned up most of the things. I remember redoing the wiring, getting it looking so that, well, so that solder wasn't touching the case and things like that. I do remember testing that at one point. It's got a spectrum receiver in there, which that'll stay. Protec 370 TBL servo, so that's good. It's an axe system. I can't remember the KV off the top of my head. Uh, I might try and find a uh, fuel cell cap. I'm not sure if I have one. We'll see. If I do, I'm gonna try and get that on there. Battery trays are in. It was missing some of that. I replaced all of those. The axles were where, well, that's where the flex seal name was, was derived, but uh, those I, media blasted all of the flex seal off and they were black. So I had to media blast to the point that I took off all of the black. Um, you know, they were ground down on the bottom side to where, you know, they had like smoothed things out. I'm guessing that someone was like, oh, these axles are scratched. I'm gonna get them unscratched and then paint them. But they used flex seal and it was all bad. Um, so these axles are like, exceptionally smooth rather than the nice machined fasted designs. And also there was a number of terribly stripped screw holes. I mean, so not just stripped where like when you start to tighten them, they would just kind of skip. You could just throw a screw down them just to nowhere. And they were in areas that you couldn't just buy a replacement part. These axles aren't sold individually. And even though I would have the ability to like, get a replacement part, it's not really what I was after with this type of thing. So what I had actually done was purchased a thread repair kit. How you use one of these is you drill them out and then you tap the hole with the included drill bit and tap set. And then you thread in like what's called a helicoil if you're more familiar with like the brand name, but it gives you a nice threaded insert. Uh, I put those in a couple of spots and they held really well, nice and firm. So I feel actually pretty good about those locations. The brass knuckles that are on this, I believe are SSD brass knuckles. They were also painted. So I took and media blasted them. They were missing proper hardware. So I replaced all of the hardware where appropriate so that they were, you know, in there and in good shape. Everything else is pretty much good. These are brand new Proline crawler uh, tires that I put on. Um, it's got a nice set of uh, Vanquish wheels on there with some scale GR8 hardware, which I think looks great as well. I thought that I needed to replace the shock towers, but I think that I already did that. I had actually grabbed some uh, from another truck that I already had, but I guess I replaced those a while back. These had been ground on really badly. These are TRX4 shocks that are in there. They're, I mean, they got like plier marks on the the plastic caps so they're not in the perfect condition trx4 shocks are pretty good shocks so i'm not worried about changing them out and it, the truck feels fine so i think that whoever ends up with it i'm not necessarily that concerned that they're going to feel like this is nearly as bad of a truck <laughs> as it started as it feels pretty good and it's got good electronics and i've replaced everything that i was really that concerned about uh so this one i guess is kind of a surprise to myself past me already did all of the things that present me thought I needed to do. Lucky me, you win some sometimes, right? The person did paint over the headlights, so you're not, 
can't just put headlights in there, which is kind of a bummer. You're gonna have to, you know, maybe use the nitro fuel trick to get that stripped off if you plan to use those. Um, this video is really just a disclaimer for whoever buys this. Like, I did the best that I could with what I've got. And I'm pretty confident this is a good truck now, but you're gonna find some weirdness. Looks like I am missing a couple of pieces of hardware here and there. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of go through, do a once over on this truck and then Luckily, I'm gonna just be able to call this done and move right to the class two. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Quick once over, get it ready to go down the road. So we got this one pretty much wrapped up. There was a few pieces of missing hardware that just needed to find the right length for. I did bind it up to a DX5 uh, Pro that I've got here. Uh, so just to make sure that the steering worked, throttle worked, the whole deal. Just to, I haven't done that in a long time. So to be sure that I wasn't misremembering, I made sure to do that. The motor, the mesh was too loud. Um, I loosened it up and I couldn't get enough adjustment out of it just because of the size of the motor. So I replaced the pinion with a slightly smaller one to give me proper adjustment so that I get it quieted down. The mesh was just basically bound up. So that's really all it needed though. Um, you know, it's uh, pretty close to a VS410 Pro with some nice electronics and uh, some upgraded wheels, tires, and a really interesting story. But that's gonna do it. At this point, uh, I'm gonna take what we have here and call this the end of the story for the flex seal truck in my ownership. So that one is going to get photographed and details put up and it'll find its way onto my website, which is linked in the description below, probably shortly after this video goes live or maybe before, we'll see. On to the next. Here we have the little ugly Toyota that could. Uh, now this truck is built with what appears to be some pretty decent parts. The bodywork is done well with the, the pinched front and the dovetailed rear. The paint is the, you know, <laughs> the paint is the wild card as far as that goes. And I have decided that I'm not going to change that. I'm going to leave the paint exactly like it is. For one, the effort in sanding and stripping and repainting would be a lot and I think that the character of this truck is basically how ugly it is. The part of the character that I do not like is some of the setup underneath. Now it does have a nice hinged body setup, which I really like. Um, as far as the whole body setup goes and the bumper, rear bumper, great. I think it's solid. Uh, the interior, you know, I get it that it counts and it does what it's supposed to do and all that. I just hate it. I just can't. So I'm gonna redo that. I'm gonna redo the whole thing, whether I mount it into the body permanently or leave it here on the chassis is uh, debatable. But, um, you know, the person who did this was obviously just be like, this is what matters and this is super light and that's done. And I get that and uh, it just, it's reasonable for if that is all you care about. But I care more what it looks like on the internet than anything, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's got to go for me. Uh, the front inner fenders are a little rough, but they're not that bad. Although the you know, passenger side one is slightly broken. I don't know. I may just trace them and recreate them out of aluminum. Uh, real, real thin aluminum, which will probably be uh, about the same weight as the styrene, but just look a little fancier and also be a little bit tougher since this one is is broken. Then we need to test the electronics that are in here. When I bought this, I was told that there's something up with the electronics. And I don't know what that means yet. So that's gonna be on our list as well. And then just some general cleanup and setup issues. So it's got links on here that are thin, you know, they're strong enough. They're not a, a strength issue, but the way that they're, you know, mounted to the axles with some really long spacers and some ways that are not super solid. That is what I'm most concerned about. So I want to try and beef that up, put some nice proper length hardware in with uh, some proper spacers to give everything the best chance of holding up 
as well as possible. I also know that there's a uh, missing front ring gear, at least. I believe the locker is in there because both uh, sides of the axle spin at the same time. So I believe that there's a locker in there. I just believe that there's no gear, ring gear. I, I think that there is a pinion gear because obviously we have a drive shaft bolted up, but uh, that's all we know. The shocks that are on here are some turned down Traxxas big bore shocks with Losi Mini T springs. This is a common setup uh, in the comp world. They're pink Mini T springs all the way around. So since they're pink and that's not a great color, even though there's like pink on the body, they are uh, spray painted and it's flaking off so that I can actually tell that they're pink. So we're gonna try and get those cleaned up. I think I'll, I'll strip them down or media blast them, whatever it takes to get it uh, looking a little bit better. There's gonna be a decent amount of work, especially with the interior, because I wanna do that in a way that looks better. Uh, I may use my new 3D scanner. Uh, I got this last week and I've been playing around with it specifically on some interior stuff, cages and whatnot. So I may scan this body with uh, the scanner and see about using some of that reference information to make a much better looking interior. More so because I want to keep learning the process of the scanner more so than just absolute necessity. Make sense? Good, grand, great, wonderful. I'm gonna take the body off of this truck for now because I'm gonna be working under here a lot and I don't need it just hanging up there and then, you know, hungry, hungry hippo in me. So, stripping this thing down is step number one. Let's get to it.
All right, got a bunch of work done on this truck today and things went generally a little bit faster than I thought that they would. I didn't get everything done yet. It's still going to take another week's worth of work, but we got a pretty good head start. I tore down the most of the truck, the rear suspension, the rear axle shocks. I cleaned up the rear links just because they had some rust on them. So spun those down, got them good and cleaned up and then oiled them down with some WD-40 just to make things look a little bit nicer. There was no point in replacing those parts. I did replace some of the hardware that was acting as spacers with proper spacers. And I ordered some parts to uh, better secure the rear upper links. Right now there's two screws, one going in from either side and then they're just barely going into the center portion of the uh, rear upper link mounts. So definitely not something I would consider ideal. So I ordered some hardware to be able to do that in a much more secure way. So that'll get here this week and I'll get that replaced. Beyond that, the rear of the truck pretty much all finished up as far as that goes. In the front, the links didn't really need much work. I did do some similar cleanup of hardware going to proper spacers rather than like lock nuts acting as spacers, just little things like that, nothing super significant. I did open up that front axle. I thought that it was missing a ring gear and it wasn't missing a ring gear. It was actually just a three bolt locker, which was like the stock axial lockers that the SX-10-2s originally came with and it had sheared the three screws. So it has an overdrive gear set in there, which nice bonus. And it just needed a new locker. So I put a new six bolt locker in there that I had on hand. And now our front is uh, spinning smoothly and uh, the whole drivetrain should be good to go now. The shocks all the way around, I disassembled the exterior portions of them, got them good and cleaned up. And then I took the springs and I stripped off the paint that was on there best I could, uh, filed them down to give them a good bite. And then I hit them with some etching primer to hopefully grab onto those springs a little bit better, maybe not flake off so easily. It did have pink springs in the rear and I believe that they're a red or an orange spring in the front. Did my best to keep them separated and get those back on the truck in the proper way. Now inside of the truck, I have pulled the interior piece off and the dash out of the inside of the truck. This is what I'm gonna redo. Again, this was just kind of a, you know, basic. It got the job done. I know what they were after, but not exactly what I'm going for. So I did pull that out. And like I said, the dash has also been removed. This was just a, a couple of pieces of styrene with the steering wheel screwed on. We're gonna replace that all with something a little bit more uh, engineered, not ne needed, but I think that I would rather have something that looks cool. And I took the opportunity to use that new 3D scanner that I had. I scanned the interior of the body because that's the dimensions that are critical to what I'll be designing. I didn't scan the outside. So, you know, the, the views of the scan that you'll see not going to be what looks like this LC70 body really. It's all this inner detail and structure that this thing has. But I did take and kind of putting the uh, old interior back in, taking a look at it in place to see where it sets as far as you know vertically so that I can determine what level I need to start designing that interior at you know, with the, the parts that are in there. I didn't scan the chassis or the components there. It's just little things that uh, I just need a little bit of knowledge at so that I can move forward with whatever I end up designing. If you're interested in the 3D scanning thing, I'm gonna put out a video specifically on that tool here soon, but I wanna try and use it a number of times, make sure that I'm familiar as possible with it before I start really putting out uh, content that's you know supposed to be informative. I wanna be informed myself first. I also made new front inner fenders. I took off the uh, painted styrene ones, which were uh, cracked or bent, broken in a couple of spots. And I traced them, made some new ones that when the body is down, they fit nicely in there. And I also put a bend in them so you don't see back into the interior when the body's down. It's a little bit extra, but it looks nice. It's nice detail when you can't see back into the truck. So uh, it didn't take too long, made a simple cardboard template to get that done. Trimmed up, cut, and made sure that it clears all of the suspension components, the body itself, and the tires, wheels as they steer and articulate. So what you'll see next time is an interior design, construction, and hopefully installation. And then the wiring, the wiring is the last thing left. I need to test everything to make sure that it all works. And that will wrap up what I've got to do to get this truck completed. 
pretty happy with how everything went today. Just some good cleanup, getting things sorted so that this truck is proper. I feel pretty good. But that's gonna do it for this week's episode of Flip That Truck. The Flex Seal truck will be hitting the website very shortly. Just have to get the final details on that wrapped up and it will be on there. Thanks again for watching another episode of Flip That Truck. Again, if you have trucks you're looking to sell that are interesting, custom, things like that, let me know, shoot me a message either on Instagram or through my website. Website's always best because we email is easier to track. So with that, link to my website in the description below. As always, thanks for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoy these. Subscribe if not already. Leave a comment. Let me know what you're looking forward to seeing. With that, thanks again for watching. We'll see you on the next one.